Shove it, man! All right, it's the rib cracker extraordinaire. I'll break them and I sure don't care. Today's video is a bit of a sensitive one. Handle with caution. I have admittedly delayed this video as I wanted to tackle this properly and not throw out random accusations. But I think the squad are now ready to hear what I have to say, even if it is painful to hear. The subject of this video is Daphne, who actually qualifies for Ring of the Hawks Season 4. The show where we watch back a wrestler's short run with a company, and at the end we shove them a final grade to see if they can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. This was also a Patreon request by Wrestle with Jess. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. Alright, it's Daphne. Let's see if you all agree. Yeah, I touched on this a year or so ago when I made a tribute to her sad passing. And there was some stuff that came to light which I wasn't really ready to talk about because it felt too controversial at the time. But since doing the research, this stuff can now go down as factual. Stick around to the end of the episode to catch that. Now technically, Daphne appeared on the very first and second TNA show, but I'm not counting that as a match as it was just a lingerie battle royal, and she was gone after this as TNA didn't have a women's division. For her proper debut, we've got to skip all the way to 2008. Match 1, Awesome Kong $25,000 Challenge. Basically, people are chosen from the crowd who are brave enough to face Awesome Kong. JB says that he recognises Daphne because he worked with her in WCW. Daphne is selected to face Kong. Kong aggressively throws her around the ring straight away. Daphne tries to come back with some ineffective strikes and Kong's look far more effective. Kong now bow and arrows Daphne above her head with her own foot hitting her in the head. She's then dropped to the mat and the fight heads out the ring. Kong smashes her head into the guardrail. Back at the ring, Kong hits a sort of pounce. There's the set out awesome bomb. A completely one-sided match, but at least it was fun to watch. It's a C for the debut. Match 2, Destination X 2009, 6 women's tag match. The beautiful people, Velvet, Angelina and Gap Eyes versus Taylor Wilde, Roxy Laveau and Daphne, who is using her governor gimmick. This is year after the last match, and it's sort of the start of a proper run with the company. TNA decided to bring Daphne into the company as a Sarah Palin impersonator and she was used to get under the beautiful people's skin because they thought she was the real Sarah Palin. A really weird bad gimmick. Velvet screams that she wants the governor to start. She throttles her in the corner and tags Angelina. Together they hit some Together they hit some kicks. Daphne dodges an elbow drop and tags out. The match continues for ages without our girl. I'm not really sure what's going on. This is unlike any Ring of the Hawk debut match. Finally the match breaks down and Daphne climbs in the ring. She throws Angelina out the ring and then goes running off her partner Roxy's bat to dive into the beautiful people. Taylor Wilde kills Madison with a bridging German suplex and it's over. A horrible Ring of the Hawk re-debut. I can't remember her doing a single thing. She may as well have not been in this match. It's an S because she literally did nothing. I'm sorry. It's made worse because straight after the match, a wild slap nuts appears. Oh, Jay. Jeff Jarrett. He will be the referee in some sort of wacky match. Match 3, Madison Rain with Angelina Love and Velvet Sky versus the Governor who doesn't even get an entrance. Madison charges with the go behind and the Governor sort of slops to the floor for no reason. Back on her feet she sends Madison running and tries to roll her into a single leg Boston Crab but it looks horrible. Angelina distracts the ref so Velvet can boot the Governor away. Madison knees her in the gut a couple of times into a really bad looking swinging net breaker for a two count. The match continues and the governor finally lands a move of a running crossbody. More cheating for the beautiful people. The governor starts a comeback for Mr. Kennedy Netbreaker. She hits some strikes and one of the worst looking drop kicks of all time. This isn't going well. The ass to the face gets the governor a two count. For the third time, the beautiful people interfere with a trip. It looks like Madison's about to put her away, but instead it's reversed into a slow motion small package and it's over. The beautiful people are bad losers and they give Daphne a haircut and take away half her hair with some blunt scissors, which Don West points out would really hurt. Another horrible match with basically every move look bad. I'm sorry I love this one, but this was not a good match. I know this is an appalling start, but surely it'll get better. Match 4, Mixed Tag, One Dirty Bitch ODB and Hillbilly Cody Dina vs The Idiot Abyss and Daphne. Yay, she's actually Daphne now. Daphne starts out doing a gorilla impression. It's funny. She bashed her boobs into ODB, which is a bad decision. ODB misses a chop in the corner and Daphne hits some of her own. ODB does it back and hits a scoop slam. The smell my ass elbow drop misses and Daphne executes a jackknife pin for a one count. The match continues with ODB running into a kick to the gut, but nothing's really working and Daphne has to tag in Abyss. It doesn't go well for Hillbilly Cody Dina and Abyss quickly beats him with a black hole slam. This still wasn't very good, but at least her character is much better and the crowd actually reacted to her now. It's a D. 
It turns out that she will be in a wacky faction of people with serious issues. She is some sort of former lover of Abyss, and also Dr. Stevie's here to help with her aggression problems. Match 5, Lockdown 2009, Queen of the Cage match, Madison Rain vs. Some Jobber Bolt vs. Daphne who gets a really loud crab reaction. Wow, look at that tattoo. Vs. ODB with Cody Dina. What a random match. Daphne quickly nails a northern lights on Madison for a one count. Some Jobber gets shoved into another Daphne pin for another one count. ODB starts dominating so Daphne climbs on her back. Bad decision as she's thrown to the map. Everyone's working on ODB and Daphne wants to join in, but they don't seem to like her either. Daphne takes them out of a double crossbody. She hits some job with a hair assisted net breaker. She starts screaming at the crowd but misses her middle rope elbow drop. Daphne's down for ages from that one. She finally returns breaking up a pin and then randomly she hits a swinging fisherman suplex on some jobber. Madison breaks the pin up and they both end up taking each other down by the haircut for the double down. ODB gets drunk and it fires her up and she kills some job with a power slam. It's over. Not the best match I've ever seen, but at least she had a range of moves here and she had some personality. This one's a C from the Hawk. Daphne is unhappy that none of the other knockouts came to protect her when the beautiful people gave her that haircut, so she attacks Taylor Wilde. Well, to be fair, she has a fair point. Match 6, Sacrifice 2009. Wow, considering she doesn't seem to be involved in the title picture, she's sure getting on pay-per-view a lot. First ever Knockouts Monsters Ball match. It's Daphne of Dr. Stevie and Abyss versus Taylor Wilde who works in a sunglasses hut. Daphne swings a cane straight away, which misses. Wilde knocks her down with a spinning heel kick and three elbow drops. There's a trash can full of weapons and Taylor fills the ring with them. Bad decision as Daphne hits her in the face with a detour sign. Daphne picks her up and slams her on the trash can lid. She chokes Taylor in the corner with her boot while screaming like a maniac. Taylor starts to come back in the corner and throws Daphne face first into the trash. Taylor smashes her three times in the head with a sheet. She also puts her into the trash can and hits it with a hockey stick and a kick. Daphne makes a comeback of an eyelash rake. It doesn't work and Taylor sort of Death Valley throws her into the trash can and that's the free. Why was this on pay-per-view? Daphne is a bad loser and takes Taylor out with a spinning fisherman suplex. Now Dr. Stevie decides what type of weapon she should use. It ends up being the thumbtacks, but Dr. Stevie wants Abyss to do it. He's too scared or too much of an idiot and doesn't do it. Instead, he chokeslams Dr. Stevie into the tax. There's a table set up at ringside. Did they miss a spot or something? A three-minute hardcore match where not a lot happens. I guess it's a C because she took some bumps most women in this air wouldn't have dared to take. Match 7, Daphne vs. Taylor Wilde. Taylor kicks Daphne off the ring apron straight away. They fight on the outside. Daphne crashes into the steps. Taylor dumps in her thong with anger and she rains down with punches. More crazy people come to ringside as Daphne starts raking on her back. Daphne climbs to the middle rope but misses her elbow drop. Taylor flies with a missile dropkick which doesn't miss. Nice pinning attempt from Taylor now but it's just a two. Daphne is slammed again but Taylor starts getting distracted by the people on the outside. Daphne throws her to the mat and hits a move that they're now calling the lobotomy. That's the three. Raven starts talking about wet dreams and it ends. It wasn't much of a match but at least she won. It's a D. Match 8, tag match. Daphne and Angelina love with the beautiful people take on Taylor Wilde and Awesome Kong with Raisha Saeed. Daphne doesn't start this one. Angelina gets scared of Awesome Kong and tags Daphne who isn't scared. Kong squashes her and whips her hard into the corner and follows it with the ass to the face special. Taylor Wilde tags in. The match is turned when Daphne distracts the ref and Angelina can cheat. We quickly get a double down and everyone is exhausted after only 2 minutes. Kong gets back in and starts dominating Daphne. Angelina stops the awesome bomb from happening, but it doesn't help anyway because moments later Kong beats Daphne with the implant buster for the free. Everyone is bad losers and they all do a beatdown until Tara makes the save. Honestly, nothing to say, it's an S. Match 9, Slammiversary 2009, Monsters Ball Mixed Tag Match. The man called Raisin teams up with Daphne because they're both crazy and have a doctor called Stevie. They take on Taylor Wilde and Abyss. We're not hanging around here. Raven and Daphne are sent into each other and smacked down. Abyss throws his own partner into the air to smash them more in the corner. Then Abyss squashes Daphne in the corner. This run is about to get a lot tougher for Daphne. Taylor Wilde hits with a Death Valley throw, but she can't follow that up because of Dr. Stevie. Meanwhile, Abyss picks Daphne up and press slams her out of the ring onto Raven and Stevie. Taylor Wilde also does a dive onto the pile of bodies. Daphne is rolling around the floor screaming as she's kicked in the gut time and time again. Daphne wakes up and tries to climb onto Abyss in the crowd. Taylor smacks her from behind with two lids, which causes Daphne to fall backwards and hit the back of her head on the steps. Jesus. 
The cameramen lose track of Daphne for a while, which is probably a good thing as she gets a chance to recover. Eventually, everyone is fighting together around the stage area. Daphne is set up on a table and Taylor climbs up a speaker on the stage. Taylor crashes her through the table with a splash. Sadly for Daphne, this match isn't over for her. Raven and Abyss will fight for a while now. The girls do eventually return. Daphne smashes Taylor in the face of a cooking sheet. Eventually, Abyss wants to use the dumb tax. Daphne tries to stop him, but she isn't powerful enough. She dumps in her fishnets with anger and realises she's caught between a rock and a hard place. Taylor Wilde suddenly rushes the ring and hits Daphne with a cab driver slam, a cab driver slam into the tax. It's over soon after when Abyss gives Raven the black hole slam on the tax. Pretty insane bumps from Daphne here. She just doesn't seem to do too much. She's just a bumping machine for people. I have to give her an A for her bravery and her efforts here. Match 10. Match of 10,000 tax. Four days after the last match. Daphne versus Taylor Wilde. It's basically just a pole match. You win when you can retrieve the tap bag from the pole and slam your opponent into the tax. Daphne jumps Taylor before the bell. She does a snap mare into a running net breaker. Both girls try to climb the pole, but they're unsuccessful. Then 30 seconds into the match, Daphne does retrieve the bag, so it begs the question, why bother putting them on a pole? Daphne dives right into a kick to the gut. She does manage to grab Taylor's eyelashes and smacks her in the head with a tap bag. Here come the dumb tacks. They take turns reversing slams into the tax. Eventually, Taylor just picks her up and throws her into the tax, and that's that. If this feud carries on any further, Taylor really needs to take a bump. It seems a bit unfair that Daphne has to take them all. Not really much to say here, but that one flow into the tax. It's a C. Match 11, Battle Royal. Daphne doesn't even get an entrance after all her efforts. Daphne and Taylor still seem to be feuding as they can't keep away from each other. Within literally 20 seconds, Taylor just throws Daphne out. Then Madison splats down on top of her. It just seems weird that you have her doing all this hardcore stuff that most women wouldn't dare to do, yet you clearly think she's worthless at the same time. The match is won by Tracy Brooks. It's an S. Match 12. No DQ match. Daphne vs. Hamada. Daphne quickly snap mirrors her and snaps her neck. We get a chop battle. Both of these girls are bringing it. Sadly, Daphne runs into a big boot. Daphne thinks she's slowed her down for kick and a reversal on the ring apron, but instead she's kicked to the outside. We return from an advert break with Daphne finally managing to hit a middle rope elbow drop for a two count. Unfortunately, Hamada floors her again, this time with an enziguri. Hamada starts throwing headbutts and a jumping DDT for a two count. Daphne finally dodges a kick and then throws one of her own with the shining wizard. That's just a two. The match spills out the ring. Daphne grabs a chair but misses and smacks the ring pole. Hamada traps Daphne's head in that same chair and throws it into the pole. Daphne's lying on the table now and Hamada flies with the moonsault through the table. She still has to get her back in the ring though and she beats her with the Hamada driver. I'm starting to think that Daphne might be one of the greatest of all time at doing the J.O.B. to others. A really fun match which was sadly 90% Hamada. It's a B. Daphne isn't done with her crazy spots though. And this one has to be mentioned although she's not actually in the match. She interferes in a monster's ball match between Foley and Abyss at Bound for Glory 2009. She's still trying to aid her Dr. Stevie in his mission to take out Abyss. During this match, Daphne climbed up to the top rope to stop Abyss. Instead, he choked her and pushed her backwards through a barbed wire board. This would badly injure Daphne and actually can be linked back to her death. It was that bad. It left her with a concussion and CTE. I'll go into the behind the scenes stuff at the end of this video, but wow, honestly, what a brutal few months for Daphne. She's only a little thing too. It's not like some big fat guy with plenty of padding that you would normally expect to see taking hardcore bumps. Match 13, Women's Knockout Tag Title Tournament. Daphne and the future legend Alicia Flash versus Sarita and Taylor Wilde. Taylor Wilde has been a real run under for Daphne. We'll have to see if that continues here. Daphne doesn't start. It doesn't go well for Alicia Flash and finally Daphne is tagged in with Sarita. She gets arm dragged and hit with a senton for a two count. Here comes the run end to Taylor Wilde. Taylor tries to dive into a sunset flip which Daphne easily kicks out of but straight away Sarita runs off her partner's back into a crossbody. Flash cheats on the outside allowing Daphne to hit some sort of knockdown and she tags out. She does return against Taylor though. She manages to hit the shining wizard but it's just the two. They're now calling that move the Daphne's. Zombie Hot shoots a half Nelson until Taylor hits her in the head with a tainy. Nah, no, it doesn't work. Daphne tries to work with her partner which doesn't work either and Sarita DDTs Daphne. She's still getting completely destroyed by Taylor. It's all irrelevant as Sarita beats Lissa Flash with a belly to belly. It's an S, just not good. Match 14, Knockouts Battle Royal. As usual, Daphne doesn't get an entrance and then... Uh, Amada headbutts her and throws her out within 10 seconds. 
What is with this super weak booking? The match is won by Tara, it's an S. Match 15, Knockouts Title Tournament. Daphne, who is billed as being from Sybil, Texas. I've looked it up and there is no such place, so what's this a reference to? I've tried researching that too and still have no idea what or why it's Sybil, Texas. Taz brags about having poor people in third world countries make Daphne's miniature hats for her. She takes on Awesome Kong, so it's not going to be good. They start with a test of strength, which goes as badly as expected for Daphne, so she stops that and chop blocks Kong. She tries another test of strength with Kong on her knees and loses it again. Daphne is thrown across the ring like an NPC. Randomly, Kong just lies on top of her legs for ages. It looks like Daphne is tapping out, but apparently not. Kong picks her up and pretzels her above her head and drops her to the mat. Daphne dumps in her fishnets with fear and tries to run, but she's too slow and she's thrown into the steps. Daphne tries to kick her as Kong gets back in the ring. It looks bad, for some reason Kong actually sells it. It doesn't matter though because Daphne can't do anything and Kong makes it back to her feet to do the implant buster for the free. It's a D for making some of Kong's offense look brutal, I don't know. Match 16, Daphne vs Tara. This one looks like it's going to be over in record time after Tara hits the big side slam in a matter of seconds, but it's just a two. Daphne just can't get going and she runs into a bat body drop. Finally, Daphne counters Tara with a kick. Daphne does three hair mares without release and a boot to the face. She kicks Tara out the ring and laughs with happiness. Randomly, Daphne hits Tara with a toolbox a couple of times and the match is thrown out. She puts a steel guardrail on top of Tara and hits it repeatedly with a steel chair. Dr. Stevie of all people has to stop her. Well, it wasn't much of a match, but at least that's a character and storyline work. It's a C. Match 17, one dirty bitch ODB versus Daphne. Daphne charges straight away into the ring pole. What a dumbass. Tara starts cutting a promo during the match. She admits she didn't take Daphne seriously in the last match and challenges her to a title match. Not really sure what Daphne's done to be in the title picture. She has an appalling win-loss record. Daphne won't stop wrapping ODB's leg around the ring pole and start smashing weapons into it. She has a broomstick now, which seems very appropriate for Daphne. Once again, Dr. Stevie stops her. It's a D. Match 18, Angelina Love vs. Daphne, who is apparently a beautiful person for one night only. She jumps Angelina from behind. Daphne opens a toolbox and takes ages trying to decide which weapon she would like to use. She eventually chooses a hammer, but the ref stops her. Angelina sweeps her legs out. Her offense doesn't last long as the beautiful people grab her and pull her thong first into the ring pole. The match is thrown out for DQ. Daphne slams Angelina into the side of the entry ramp. Tara makes the save. Well, at least Daphne looks sort of dangerous, it's D. Match 19, Destination X 2010, Knockouts title match. The challenger is Daphne versus Tara the champion. They both start throwing fists before the bell. Tara scores the first knockdown. She also slams her and throws her t-shirt in her face, followed by a standing moonsault for a two. Daphne turns it around by launching her into the turnbuckles. She keeps crashing down on Tara's back. A kick to the panty region seems pretty effective and gets Daphne a two. Daphne now hits a slam of her own in the Eddie Guerrero boot wash. Daphne misses her following attack in the corner and she's put in the tarantula for a four count. Daphne ain't hurt and throws Tara back into the ring. We get the triple hair mare now. Daphne puts on a very unique submission. I have no idea what to call this. It amuses Taz though. Tara fights out of it and lands some kicks and the big end Guri gets the knockout shot. Tara plants her with a big spine buster for a two count. Daphne cuts her off and gets a two off a northern light suplex. No one can stay on top. It's Tara with the big side slam for a two now. Such is the tone of the match because Daphne shuts down the knee to the neck. The Daphne. Daphne then loses the plot and tries to hit Tara with the belt. She misses and straight away Tara beats her with a widow's peak. Just a middle of the road kind of match. It's a C. Match 20, 8 women tag match. The beautiful people and Daphne who has stolen Tara's tarantula versus Tara who rushes to the ring to protect her spider. Daphne is about to stomp on it. Tara's partners are Taylor, Sarita and Angelina who eventually come to her aid. Daphne is still taunting Tara with the spider. The match breaks down. Angelina kills Daphne with lights out. Everyone hits a big move except Daphne. She's seen spying on Tara from the outside. Tara realises that a tarantula is in the ring and this distracts her. Daphne rushes the ring and connects with a lobotomy. For the free. Wow, a really random victory for Daphne. Don't you think perhaps this should maybe have happened before the pay-per-view? She did absolutely nothing in this match except win. It's a D. Match 21, first blood match. Tara takes on Daphne with a fight starting backstage during a promo. It's mostly just Tara throwing her around backstage. The coverage team are quick to point out that this is the first ever Knockouts First Blood match. It seems like Daphne was a part of lots of first ever matches. They eventually brawl onto the stage. 
Daphne keeps biting her and asking the ref to check Tara's head. They fight on top of the commentators who look really annoyed. Tara drags Daphne down the steps. Daphne tries to choke her out of a cable and that won't make her bleed, but it might knock her out. It doesn't, and Daphne has her broomstick again now, much to Taz's amusement. Daphne shatters the stick and looks to stab Tara, that thing looks legitimately sharp. Fortunately, Tara blocks this attack. Tara hits the Widow's Peak and then drills Daphne in the head with a toolbox, and that's that. Daphne has busted open the smallest bit of blood in history. Not sure what the point is in having all these sort of matches as they're all just going to be really short and forgettable. It almost feels like the only reason they did it is so they can say that they had a women's first blood match. It's an S. Guess what? That's another concussion for Daphne. Match 22. Knockouts Lockbox Challenge Match. Not this rubbish again. Basically, every single knockout will have an elimination tag match, and if you manage to pin someone in this match, you get entered into the lucky draw box. It's completely dumb and stupid. Tara gets the first pin. During an advert break, Daphne actually manages to pin Hamada after she misses a moonsault and Daphne knees her in the head with the Daphne. Daphne wins a key for later in the night. Later in the night, the winners are all lined up to find out what their random key unlocks. Velvet wins a match of her choosing. Tara wins her spider back. Angelina Love wins the knockouts title from Tara. And finally, Daphne must do a striptease. She doesn't want to do it though, but she's told if she doesn't do it, she'll be fired. What follows is a very cringe-inducing moment as Daphne slowly moves her clothes around. This goes on for a while. Mercifully, Lacey breaks it up and does the strip for her. Couldn't help but feel sorry for Daphne here. It's a C for having to go through this rubbish. Match 23, Knockouts Tag Title Match. ODB and Daphne who don't get an entrance challenge for the beautiful people's tag belts. Lacey is scared of Daphne. She tags Velvet who immediately crashes to the mat. Daphne hits a knee strike combo to wipe Velvet out. Daphne starts chasing Lacey around the ring, which allows Velvet to get the advantage. Later on, Lacey hits a back handspring into an elbow drop and tags out. Velvet boots Daphne into the mat a bunch of times. For some reason, Velvet tries to dive and Daphne just jabs her in the gut. She manages to tag ODB. ODB has it won, but the beautiful people cheat with hairspray and Velvet gets the win off a roll-up. A pretty horrible match, isn't it? After this, Daphne was once again on the injury list after suffering a stinger and I'm talking Steve Borden from a barely trained wrestler of Rosie Lottolove. Although this didn't happen on the main show, TNA decide to air the footage and brag about it. Daphne does actually manage to return to the ring after that injury. Match 24, Daphne vs Angelina Love. Angelina locks her arms and throws some knees to the gut. Daphne has bounced all over the ring with clotheslines. Daphne tries to come back but gets a spinning heel kick for her efforts. She fights out of a submission with a stunner, which doesn't hurt Angelina. She front slams Daphne a couple of times into the lights out for the free. Daphne might as well have not returned from injury. This is an S. Match 25. Final match. Knockouts tag title tournament match. Sharita and Daphne take on the beautiful people. The crowd are loudly chanting for Daphne. Sadly, she may as well not exist here because it's all about Sarita and Velvet feuding. Sarita does actually tag her into loud cheers. Daphne hits a very delayed body slam and a boot wash where something invisible knocks Daphne to the floor. Angelina gets the tag and she makes short work of Daphne ending with a lights out finisher for the free. Game over, it's an S. So Daphne's run with TNA ended here because she felt she could no longer wrestle due to the injury she had racked up. She was also involved in a lawsuit with TNA over unpaid medical bills. It turns out this whole thing was a complete mess behind the scenes. TNA only offered to pay $600 towards her medical bills, yet Daphne needed $26,000. Need I remind you, this was 2010, the year everybody and their grandma was given a TNA payday. Daphne had never been a hardcore wrestler until the creative team had pushed for her to do such spots. These spots over the space of just a few months effectively ended her wrestling career. There's two points of view to be had here. Yes, you are personally responsible for saying yes and no. That is your own choice. But then when you're being pressured, it can sway your decision. Thinking of the Bound for Glory table spot in particular, Daphne did not want to do this spot, but Terry Taylor and Vince Russo persuaded her and they assured her everything would be fine. But guess what? She wasn't fine. But despite their assurances beforehand, TNA wasn't willing to cover any of her medical bills. Daphne also said in a shoot interview since that Mick Foley was involved with persuading her to go through the spot. He told her it'd be as memorable as his Hell in a Cell bump at King of the Ring 1998 a match which took years off his own life, yet he was encouraging Daphne to do the same thing over a decade later. He made her feel like it was a real honour for her to take this bump, a man who really should have known better by then. We hear all this stuff all the time, all these preachy comments, yet he didn't say anything to Daphne. 
Foley has never apologised for his part in this. I am not outright blaming Foley for her death. I am saying that he had as much to do with it as the creative team, perhaps more, as his words coming from a legend definitely swayed her decision. It was apparently essential to the story that she go crashing through this table wrapped in barbed wire. Foley has largely avoided any blame for this situation, and usually the blame for the death falls on TNA as a whole. Sources within TNA claim it was not uncommon for Vince Russo to persuade wrestlers to go through a dangerous spot. Then, following that, they put Daphne in the ring of a completely untrained wrestler who sent her to hospital again, and once again TNA refused to give her any help with her medical bills. Reportedly, Bubba Ray gave Daphne the cold shoulder for making him look bad as it was his student who injured Daphne. After two years, Daphne was given a settlement from TNA. The court was about to rule that Daphne was actually an employee and not an independent contractor, and if that had happened, both TNA and WWE would have been pretty screwed and had to pick up everybody's medical bills in the future, god forbid. Maybe try getting rid of the 500 different people on your roster and you could probably protect your workers. These injuries caused Daphne to enter early menopause and pile on the weight. She has blamed that table spot for the majority of her health problems. She became a shell of her former self and she became too embarrassed to perform in public. Gradually, the depression got worse. It got so bad that in 2021, she went on an Instagram rant about ending her own life. This was watched by many wrestlers. Nobody could do anything to stop her from what followed, and that night she took her own life. Foley wrote a long and slightly guilty sounding message where he was quick to try and distract from the situation. All of the comments on that message were praising Foley. Kind of sickening. Terry Taylor was the one to mostly take the fall for the lawsuit situation as he was fired by TNA. You have to wonder if Daphne had looked like a Barbie girl, would she still be here with us? Why was it always her that had to take the hard bump and none of the other girls? Look at all those matches with Taylor Wilde. Taylor didn't really take any bumps. Ugh, a really depressing situation. We've got to shove Daphne a final grade for Ring of the Hawks Season 4. Daphne's booking was incredibly weak, but it was nice to see somebody so invested in their character. She had some good promos too. She clearly did have some wrestling skills, but rarely showed them. At times I'd even say her wrestling looked bad. Maybe she was working injured half the time. The hardcore stuff was insane for a woman on American telly from the 2000s and I will always remember the spot, a real character who added to the product, especially in 2009. So this was a hard run to grade because it was a mixed bag. There were a lot of bad matches in this run too. I think overall the highest I can give her is a C, and much of that is due to character work and her willingness to entertain the fans, and if you don't agree with that, I'll make your girl make me a meal and then I'll beat her with the pans.